choice as an introduction or whatever to the sermon. I'll either tell you a joke or sing you a song. Which do you want? Do both. <laughs> I like option three. All right. Sing it a song it's a joke. All right. Now, all of you that are like myself, what hair I've got is turning white. You can join in. Jesus loves me, this I know. Though my hair is white as snow, and my eyes are growing dim, still he bids me trust in him. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died. Heaven's gates to open wide. Soon I'll go to be with him. Never more to deal with sin. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Now, do you still want to hear a joke? Yes. <laughs> Got one vote. Two. All right. Three. Three. All right. So, Jethro and Hazel were traveling up 69 over here, and he got pulled over. Policeman that came up beside the car, he said, I need to see your driver's license, registration, proof of insurance. Well, Hazel, she's getting a little older, and she's kind of hard hearing. So she said, hey, what he say? De Jethro keeps the little two in here. He said, he wants to see my driver's license, registration, proof of insurance. Policeman said, sir, the reason I pulled you over is because you were speeding. She said, hey, what'd he say? Oh, he said, I was just speeding, I was just speeding. Policeman said, sir, I see here in your driver's license you're from Tennessee. You know, funny thing, the ugliest woman I ever saw in all my life was from Tennessee. She said, hey, what'd he say? Oh, he said he thinks he knows you. <laughs> Only the Marine Corps groaned. <laughs> All right, let's get serious now. Because the subject that I have to deal with today is a very uh, serious, serious subject. We're going to look in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Is there somebody that knows that by heart could stand up and quote it? If you do, don't be bashful. All right, then I'll quote it to you. And we know, I know there's some of you know it. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Now, as a companion to that, how many have heard that the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed? How many have heard that? All right, what we're going to do this principle that we have here in Romans 8, 28, we're going to show you an example in Genesis chapter 37, and I'm trying to find Genesis 37, that is the Old Testament, right? Yeah. All right, Genesis chapter 37, verses 14 through 19, Genesis 37, verse 14. This is Jacob's going to send Joseph to go check on his brothers. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren, well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and said, And, and behold, he was wandering in the field. The man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. 
And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. Let's pray and see if the Lord will help us today. Heavenly Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God would take control of this old preacher. Father, speak to me and through me. And Father, I pray that you'd give these people that are assembled here today something to take home with them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 From this chapter on in the book of Genesis, God is silent. We see his hand, but we do not hear his voice. Up till this point, for instance, Abraham, God spoke to Abraham. God spoke to Jacob, etc., but from this chapter in Genesis on, we do not hear God speak, but we do see God's hand. Amen. Now, the history of the world hinged on what we've just read about. And un what was the guy's name? Not given. An unnamed stranger and an overheard conversation changed the history of the world. Now, I want to give you, pose some questions to you this morning. What if, what if that stranger hadn't been there? What if he hadn't overheard a private conversation? It didn't, they didn't say it to him. I heard them say they were talking to each other. They weren't talking to him. What if Joseph got there and the stranger had already left? What if they, what if he didn't volunteer the information after all? He'd overheard a private conversation. He said, none of my business. I, I, he'll think I'm a busybody listening in to other people's. I'll keep it to myself. If Joseph hadn't learned his brethren were at Dothan, it would have changed the history of the world. When he got there to Dothan and they saw him coming, what did they do? They had a little conference that said, well, let's kill him. Yeah. And Reuben said, no, 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 let's not kill him. Let's put him in a pit over here. And then, typical Jewish person, he said, we'll sell him. Make some money on him. <laughs> Listen, I went to a Jewish synagogue. Listen, don't get the wrong idea. I went to a Jewish synagogue for eight years when I was studying Hebrew. And I love the Jewish people, but I still make jokes about them. All right. If Joseph hadn't learned his brethren were at Dothan, it says he was wandering in the field. You know what he would have done? He'd have gone back home. And if he'd have gone back home, there would have been no pit. There would have been no Midianite merchantman carrying him down to Egypt. No Potiphar, no Potiphar's wife, no prison, no butler and baker for him to interpret their dreams, no interpretation of Pharaoh's dreams, no being promoted, being prime minister of Egypt, no being in a position where he could invite his family to come down into Egypt where the Jewish people became a nation over that 400 years. Stay with me. Don't wander on me now. Don't be out in that field wandering in the field. Then... There would have been no Moses raised as the son of Pharaoh's daughter, learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. No burning bush, no Passover lamb, 
No exodus out of Egypt. No Sinai. No Ten Commandments. If no Moses, no Torah, he gave the first five books of the Bible. If Israel never became a nation, we would have no Jews, no Bible, no Jesus the Messiah. Would you say this morning, would you agree with me, if it hadn't been an overheard conversation and an unnamed stranger, it would have changed the history of the world. <coughs> so, what can we learn from this unnamed stranger and this overheard conversation? Well, let's go to the end of the book of Genesis, chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20. Now I'm going to go back up and read from verse 15. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, thy father, did command, uh, thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall you say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him, and his brethren also went and fell down before his face and said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. God meant it for good. Well, wait a minute. That's the same thing that it says over in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. That's right. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. Guess what? I just deliberately misquoted that verse. What did I leave out? And we know you know the problem, folks, is that God works all things together for our good and we don't know it. Yeah. You got to know it. Hey, was that pit good? No, it was bad. Was being sold into slavery good? No, it was bad. Was Pharaoh, uh, uh, Potiphar's wife, was that situation good? No, it was bad. Was being in prison good? No, it was bad. Was the butler and baker for, forgetting about him when he was down there in the prison good? No, it was bad. The Bible says it works together for good. God was molding him and making him the man that he needed to be able to handle that job of being prime minister of Egypt. He wouldn't have been tough enough. He wouldn't have been the man that he needed to be if he hadn't gone through that furnace. So don't go around sucking your thumb. Well, I lost my job. Well, my car broke down. Well, listen, that. Listen, listen. Do you believe what God has said? That everything that comes our way, if we're a child of God, we love Him. Does it say? And we know. Do you know it? That all things work together for good. To, the, to them that love God and to the called according to His purpose. Now, I'm going to tell you who that unnamed stranger was. I don't think that God entrusted that job to some flunky. 
Huh? I think this was the pre-incarnate Christ. Well, I've got my papers mixed up here. You know when you get old, your thumbs and your fingers don't work? I left out a page somewhere. I don't know. I lost a page. Well, hmm. Is there another page in that Bible? All right. I'm going to just read the last part of this poem. I heard him speak peace to the angry waves, that turbulent raging sea. And lo, at his word are the waters still the stranger of Galilee. A peaceful, a quiet, and holy calm now and ever abides with me. He holdeth my life in his mighty hands, this stranger of Galilee. Come ye who are driven and tempest-tossed in his gracious salvation sea. He'll quiet life's storms with his peace be still, this stranger of Galilee. He bids me go and the story tell what he ever to you will be. If only you let him with you abide, this stranger of Galilee. Oh, my friend, won't you love him forever? So gracious and tender is he. Accept him today as your Savior, this stranger of Galilee. Listen, don't think of yourself as an insignificant and unimportant person. In the scheme of God, listen, do you realize that you are a child of the King of Glory, the ruler of the universe? Amen. That makes you a very important person. That's right. You know what the Bible tells us that we have entertained angels unawares? So even an unnamed stranger and an overheard conversation changed the history of the world. But you know what? God took an old sailor boy, 20 years old, over 60 years ago now, and he saved his soul. Amen. And over those 60 years, I've seen thousands of souls brought to Christ. Now, has that made a big Im impact on the world at large? I have no idea. Maybe somebody that on down the line will. But I know this, it changed the eternal destiny of those souls. That's right. Don't think of yourself as unimportant insignificant. I can't do anything that's great for God. Just being a child of God is important. Does, is your name ever going to be up in lights or mine either for that matter? Probably not. But you see how an unnamed stranger and an overheard conversation do you agree with me this morning? That changed the history of the world? Yes. It did. And I'm glad it did. But I can do my part. I heard a conversation one day. Amen? Have you heard that conversation? Let's have every head bowed and every eye closed. Everyone that's here today, and you can raise your hand to a to, uh, with a testimony. To say, I have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I'm a child of the King. Raise your hand up high. Praise the Lord. God bless your hearts. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would take the word this morning and bless the hearts of these that have assembled here today. Bless the pastor and people. I. My heart goes out to Brother Stone. I know that he feels like he pastors a small church. and, and uh, But Lord, 
I pray that you'd help him to realize that his part in your great scheme of things is not un unimportant or insignificant. Lord, you've got a job for him to do it. He's faithfully been doing it for many years. God bless him. Bless this church. In Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor.